good morning, uh, Gov. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. Good morning, Guam. Uh, Gov, can we just start in on this emergency uh, declaration bill from Senator Chris Duenas that passed 8 7 uh, yesterday in the uh, session? I just got, wanted to get your perspective, obviously, because you are a two term governor. And you did have your share of disasters when you were governor. So I'm just kind of wondering where do you, uh, which side of this debate do you kind of fall on? Well, first of all, I'm not sure exactly the final version that they passed. So it's very difficult for me. And unless what they talked about in the beginning that it ends after 30 days uh, when the governor declares. I think it's 90 days. We, uh, she, I think they, they gave her like 90 days right at the beginning. And then after that, it would be, I think, every other every 30 or something. Well, yeah, I'm not really into uh, what, uh, you know, I know that they, the um, the senators back then when I was governor uh, and we had the uh, declaration of emergency for Typhoon, uh, uh, Paca and others that they uh, they they really didn't step in to, to stop the emergency because you, you work closely with the federal government that still deems it an emergency because of the flow of funds from FEMA. So I'm not sure exactly the uh, the, uh, the situation is, but if there is actually a, a flow of funds uh, under an emergency situation, then uh, you know the governor has a right to make sure that we don't get uh, left out of getting uh, funds because there is no emergency on Guam. So it's it's you know the governor is right that uh, that be careful what you ask for because you know in the end you're going to be paying for it. Uh, but if you were governor right now, Gov, and this measure was passed by the legislature, what would you what would you be saying to these senators? Uh, that, no, I, I wouldn't even talk about that. I mean, I'm not governor, and there's one governor, uh, Governor Lulian Guerrero, that's making the hard decision, and the people appreciate it. Um, uh, then I guess uh, the other one I wanted to ask you about was this official misconduct uh, bill, and I think it's Senator Brown uh, would bar people convicted of official misconduct from working in the government of Guam? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, what do you think of this official misconduct bill, Gov? It, uh, I think it would bar people convicted of official misconduct from being hired in the, into the government of Guam. That passed too? No, it didn't. There's a public hearing tomorrow. Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't even know what the bill says, but uh, certainly, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's like when they barred people that are uh, that uh, didn't graduate from high school from ever working for the government of Guam. That was an injustice done for many, many people that uh, that uh, precludes them and it's an injustice and it's still in the law right now. I think that uh, you have to be careful too about, about just uh, wiping out a certain group of people that uh, may have paid their dues in society, in society. or for example, like I said, the, the people that didn't get uh, their high school degree high school diploma rather for, for one reason or another taking care of their family and just didn't have it. So, uh, yeah, I, I think this micromanaging, uh, you know, the governor of Guam under the Organic Act is, is in a very difficult situation. I mean, you've got, you've got a governor of Guam and then you've got a board of directors and those board of directors people, I mean, they legislate from day to day uh, for different things that the governor should be making decisions on. And that's, that's the fallacy of our, of our organic act process right now. I think that uh, really we should go into writing a real constitution for Guam that we already have. Maybe we voted on it again. The mm -hmm. governor is the chief executive and uh, you don't want to, uh, like I said, treat, be treating her like, uh, like you know, you're a board of directors, people from one day to the other, one subject to the other. It's just not really national kind of thinking, but very, very parochial. Hi, good morning. I just wanted to ask if you guys are going to the $500 fundraiser tomorrow at the Hyatt. <laughs> I, I didn't know. Uh, I, I didn't get, not yet, I didn't get a ticket, so. I'll send you, though. I don't know about Jerry. <laughs> what do you think, Jerry? You got 500 of there? No, I haven't got anything either, but I'm happy for Carl to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. It sounds like you're going. You got a date. Plus, uh, plus one. Well, if not, then happy hour. There's happy <laughs> hour. You got the bars are open. Ticket, if, if, you know, if they offer me a ticket and there's still space, I'll go. <laughs> Gov, so did you get like a lot of thank you calls from the bars? Because uh, you came on here and I, I felt like you got in trouble because you were like, hey, open the bars already. 
What's going on? I didn't, get, I didn't really get in trouble. I just was trying to, uh, to uh, you know, bring the issue out. She was all, she was amenable to doing it. It's just that we needed a protocol set up by the Hotel and Restaurant Association, which she finally got three weeks later. And, um, and but she did carry it through. Right on. Are you ready to talk about GVV now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so April 1st, that's the tentative uh, tourism reopening uh, date. I, I guess the first question I had was, I know when we had a, a tentative tourism reopening date last year, uh, leading up to that date, there was a whole bunch of effort about getting the island cleaned up. And you know how it is when you got kids, you clean something up and, you know, turn around tomorrow, it's a mess again. And that's where we are right now. We did a clean up, or, and now the whole island's messy again. So, is there any effort with GVB or the IBTF to kind of go out and do some re sprucing up? Well, I'll let Jay uh, follow through with this, but uh, right now, of course, the uh, it, we are uh, we're feeling something really, really uh, exciting out there. I mean, it's probable that uh, that we're going to be opening up just just by the the different uh, executive orders the governor's putting out. She's very bullish now on the on the vaccination processes. And, uh, and and the protocols that she put in place. So uh, I think we're heading in the right direction. And uh, now is uh, the time to really think that April, the first week of April is a good target date that she put together. And uh, so, uh, but with Jerry uh, and I uh, looking at uh, how to get this thing moving, uh, I'm sure he'll tell you that uh, we need to give lead time to air aircraft uh, uh, scheduling in the Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and, and other uh, uh, things that you have to put in place. You just don't announce uh, on April 1st that you're opened up. You got to prepare ahead of time. So hopefully by uh, start in May, we'll start seeing a lot of these uh, flights coming in. So Jerry, uh, maybe you want to just uh, explain exactly, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the the scheduling of different countries around us and uh, what that bodes for us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Governor. Um, the let me circle back to the original question first on the clean up and spruce up uh, campaign. That was actually an August 1st, uh, because mm. at that time, if you recall, uh, our COVID containment was very good. And uh, the reason that went off the track is because of the sudden spike, not only on Guam, but in our three markets. So we had to scrap all that completely and then just kind of focus attention now on, on ourselves. So. For this, for this opening to take place, there are really three um, strategic initiatives that we needed to work on as a community. First of all, the containment of the COVID. And I, I would say that uh, in spite of all the ups and downs and controversy, um, we're in a good place now uh, relative to where we were just four months ago. We haven't had, uh, let me see, our car scores today are like 0.2. We haven't been this low uh, since December 3rd. Uh, so things are boding well. Uh, so the other thing we needed to do was preparing the community uh, to make sure that um, there's safety uh, protocols uh, for, you know, the different businesses here so that our local residents don't get infected if we have anybody coming in, right? And the third thing, of course, is market engagement. The market engagement issue, I think I mentioned this before, we never really went dark in our market. Even during the pandemic, we stayed engaged with social media. We stayed engaged with, you probably remember this uh, Guam, G-U-A-M, give us a moment right. campaign during the pandemic. And so we're getting ready now um, if, if the right things are in place, we're getting ready to roll out another Guam, G-U-A-M, get up and move, Ooh. which is a call to action campaign. Not give us um, American money? <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> that's the old one. That's, that comes from K-U-A-M, not from G-U-B. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, um, what we need to do now is really work with the governor and public health officials to come up with a risk proportionate protocol policy that is more uh, tourist sensitive, uh, that protects not only the local community, but allows there to be entry uh, with proper uh, testing and vaccines or whatever it is uh, from our source markets. And um, 
it looks like uh, Korea and Japan, for example, have starting to really control their, you know, their problem. And so um, this April one announcement is basically an announcement uh, to Carl's point, so that the industry can start putting in place uh, plans to to fly to Guam and to start selling Guam. Um, I, I can't disclose the uh, airline right now, but it, there's a carrier that is actually already selling uh, May uh, to Guam. And so a lot would depend on um, what kind of risk proportionate policy public health comes up with uh, that would be more visitor friendly. Um, and that's kind of on our plate uh, this next few days to work with uh, them to come up with that. Okay. Uh, where are we with the Taiwan push? Where are we in the Taiwan push? Yeah, I remember we were really pushing with Taiwan yeah. to get a good relationship with them for the tourism. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, Carl can speak more to that, uh, but uh, fundamentally, uh, Taiwan is on our radar screen in terms of uh, the same initiatives to generate business to Guam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carl, you can expand on the other issues related to Taiwan. Okay, uh, you know, the uh, Taiwan is our like our our, our really good target. I mean, uh, simply because we've got their government represented here by Teco. Uh, uh, Director General uh, Paul Chen and uh, and and Director uh, Stephen Shu, that they uh, they they really are looking at Guam as as a as a first jumping off point for the the the, the travel hungry Taiwanese that are are been cooped up, and so we're we're doing something to promote Guam together. For example, they came up with the idea of having a drawing contest. Uh, and uh, they they included the all of the Department of Education, uh, the private schools, University of Guam, to be able to set up a some kind of a, a perception of the students uh, of what the relationship is Taiwan and Guam, and bring it to a height where we bring this drawing contest to uh, to Taiwan for for display. Uh, hopefully, when the governor travels there in the early June, as as we are targeting, and so is Taiwan targeting, that that would be a good time for the governor and her delegation to go there and uh, not only open up a tourism market again, because we have one there already, but we're looking to do an expanded uh, marketing uh, person there that not only takes care of tourism, but takes care of airlines, takes care of aquaculture, agriculture, hospital, and, and, and airlines expansion. So uh, the governor is going to make it big in Taiwan simply because now that they've gone into a to a two China policy uh, over the last several months, that uh, they want to showcase Guam, America, in Asia as the place to go to, sort of just to piss off a little bit of the Chinese there. <laughs> yeah. So the Taiwan market, Chris, uh, our main market in Japan and Korea is the leisure market. For Taiwan, in addition to the leisure market. Uh, what the governor is alluding to is we'll probably see an increase in the mix of business uh, travel to Guam associated with these other activities that he's mentioned. Uh, you mentioned the uh, governor is going to be traveling. When is that? And are you guys, is it going to be a whole uh, delegation that heads to Taiwan? Well, the governor and some of the, uh, the, the, the GBB people, uh, we had scheduled that last uh, last year and uh, things went bad but uh, now she uh, she wants to make it uh, her a point to to be the, the first place to go to uh, simply because of the of the, the their their uh, infection rate they were so low and and that uh, she felt safe and she wanted to ensure that uh, once we get ours up to to par with theirs that uh, that will be the first launch taiwan is always top in her mind so june is what the consul general for uh, or the uh, director general from Taiwan is saying is a good time. I think, you know, in, in their conversation with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that would be a good target date, the first of June, first week of June. Uh, Gov, so you just talked about the two China policy, right? But I mean, is, is there any tippy toeing that has to be done on our part when we look at how much uh, soft uh, diplomacy China does in the FSM in terms of like, 
you know, monetary or or uh, donations through building bridges or, or whatever. Because their footprint is like right here, right? And then here we are, like we love you, Taiwan. I mean, is there is there any kind of do are we you, go ahead? You're talking about China, the Republic of China. Yeah. In Ta- in FSM. Mm. Well, Palau is 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 is, is, is uh, you know um, associating with Taiwan and uh, mm. so is the Marshall Islands. Uh, but uh, right now, it's uh, it's part of my article I write is that we have to uh, to not only be part of the security of this part of the world, but the uh, United States as well. And uh, it, it 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 behooves us to be able to uh, to associate with the uh, freedom loving people of Taiwan and and nowhere else uh, other than um, that in the Chinese. Uh, uh, background. I wanted to ask about so the campaign uh, last year was like give us a moment. So what is the what is the st- strategy um, going forward to promote uh, tourists to come back to Guam while at the same time uh, preparing the community and uh, um, I, mean, I guess alleviating concerns from the community here on Guam that you know we're just not inviting people you know to bring COVID into into the territory. Sabrina, I, I'm I not think sure I understand you. That, uh, that Guam. Right. Uh, Guam how, say, how are we going to promote point Guam? Would be that we're safe and uh, and uh, that's what we're trying to do and that the protocols for safety is really in place and that's what uh, the the governor has done in in the the reestablishment of PCOR three. Uh, for restaurants and, and stores and just the moving around of people that uh, we need to be. So the strategy is that Guam is three and a half hours away from Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and that uh, you know, as you as you uh, land in Guam from, 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 from Taiwan, you're already playing golf while you're still on a plane to Hawaii. Uh, I think we're going we're gonna to do that kind of a strategy. And as our new marketing uh, uh, perspective, prospective people that are there, vying for our 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 uh, uh, representation is that yes they deem that um, uh, in japan they deem that guam is the most trusted nation for tourists and we want to live up to that that's exactly what they came when we had an interview with them guam is the most trusted place in the united states for tourists and we want to capitalize on that and uh, we're never forgetting that that uh, we have to keep promoting that, you know, Guam, USA, America and Asia. These are, are the things and, and the short distances and uh, the, the good hotels that are here in place already. But primarily it's the safety uh, of the people coming here uh, because of the uh, COVID situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, just real quickly, uh, Gov, we have to cut out of our broadcast. So for everybody watching us on KUAM television, thanks so much for watching. Please switch over to our Facebook live stream or on 93.9 The Breeze. Uh, to our uh, Facebook live stream and uh, yeah. we had to cut out of our television stream yep. so now we're strictly on 93.9 The Breeze and uh, Facebook. So. Right on. Gov, so if you ever wake I know you wake up early you just drink your coffee and your biscuit and watch us on KUAM TV except Mondays. <laughs> so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday until 8 a.m. Right. So, you know, in the cinema, they are establishing or trying to or have been trying to establish this travel bubble with uh, South Korea. And uh, I guess they're working on some sort of uh, written agreement with the government over there. Uh, Is that something that we plan on doing as well with whoever we're trying to market to and 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 bring in? No, no, Sabrina, I mean, the this travel bubble uh, bubble project is is good okay <clears throat> in the early stages <clears throat> but with the vaccine coming online now and the vaccines being uh, implemented in Japan and Korea our main message now is to <clears throat> message a campaign to have confidence in the destination safety experience coming to Guam so that's going to be a key part in in the messaging now there might be in the early stages, there might be opportunities to have what we call uh, quarantine pods. Um, basically a few people, families, or a group that share the protocols uh, before, during, and after their visit to Guam. We might have some of that, we're exploring that, but you know, the real uh, effort really should be 
to get back to a more normalized system of uh, bookings. And a key part of our message, you mentioned the, uh, uh, the Give Us a Moment campaign yeah. and uh, Get Up and Move campaign. A key part of that message is going to revolve around uh, traveler information and travel um, uh, and basically messaging uh, about the safety and security of Guam as a destination. Uh, because the new paradigm in, in travel now is, uh, you know, in the past when you see crowds build up in a location, people get curious they gravitate to where the crowd is because there's something's going on, right? Now, that's the antithesis of the new protocol. And so now people want to stay away from crowds because they don't want to risk getting exposed, right? So there's a lot of things happening, uh, basically in, in a lot of dynamics changing from the past. Uh, but bottom line is a key message that we can convey to our markets is that you can come to Guam and have a safe destination experience. Mm -hmm. What about this part in uh, you're uh, ticking off those three initiatives, preparing the community? Well, preparing the community, uh, the, the, the fundamental to that is, of course, containing the virus, which we've, we've done pretty well, right? The second thing is, um, and, and GHRA, GCC, and UOG are working on on this to uh, work with a lot of the hotels and businesses to become, you know, uh, COVID safe. Uh, for the most part, though, a lot of our suppliers uh, here in the row and elsewhere already have uh, protocols in place. So just as a matter of practice, not so much for tourists, but for the local residents, they've been implementing a lot of these things. So to the extent that this, these practices have proliferated throughout the business community, uh, that just solidifies that second initiative about preparing Guam, right? Um, so that's uh, that's kind of the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, Gov, what about this? Uh, I saw that you were requesting um, 20 mil from the new Biden bill for a budget shortfall in marketing. Yes, uh, and you know, if, if you read in the paper yesterday, the governor has really highlighted GDB as now the, uh, the, 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 the child that's going to get these funds that's, uh, that's, that's very, very necessary to, to jumpstart the, uh, the economy again. And uh, she knows and understand, understood that, the, uh, that we need seed money. Uh, there's no TAF funds coming in uh, right now. There's a little, but uh, certainly not enough to be able to, to aggressively market and compete against the big boys like Hawaii that's going to be doing this. So the governor has uh, set a top priority for GVB. Hopefully we get at least $20 million from, from what uh, Senator uh, um, and Delegate Sir Nicholas had put into the $661 million, uh, you know, uh, funding for Guam. And part of that is that, uh, you know, we would get that uh, amount and the governor hopefully, uh, uh, you know, like he said, she's praying that that thing will really and go through the entire process and become law. But that's what it is right now. We've got the governor, uh, you know, now uh, putting us in a high priority because she really believes that uh, it's time now to uh, to go out and get investors, get tourists coming in, and uh, let's get, uh, you know, uh, people uh, again working. And so GDB is the prime mover in, in our economy, and, and we, we cannot ever forget that. Uh, Gov, when you talk about this Biden bill and $20 million for tourism and uh, marketing, I know that uh, the governor was saying that some of these funds can be used to replace uh, lost revenues. Yeah, revenue revenue replacement, I think. That's what she said. Right. So, I mean, uh, just, go ahead. I'm go not ahead. sure exactly what you mean, Our Chris, recovery. but uh, replacement of TAF revenue, obviously, uh, GDB's function, right, is financially supported by TAF income. And if there are no tourists coming, there's no TAF income. And that's a revenue that needs to be replaced. Right. So that being said, do you think that there's a chance that with this, uh, I mean, if everything holds true to what people are saying, uh, that we could have dodged a major economic bullet if we can use this huge relief package to kind of shore up areas that we were short in? 
No, well, there's but no restrictions, you know, uh, uh, previously on CARES money. We could not just get any money from the CARES fund, for example, because because of uh, certain guidelines. And so now uh, the way that uh, Delegate St. Nicholas passed this thing, the, the guidelines are not restrictive as it was in the past. So now we have an opportunity to get in line for some real money. We I think we got a total under the CARES fund of less than $200,000. Uh, uh, that uh, we had to justify that fell in a very narrow, uh, you know, uh, uh, jurisdiction. So it's different now. And hopefully this bill passes so that uh, we can get some of that uh, funds and first in line. Do you guys have a breakdown on uh, where you want to spend this 20 million? Is well, it it's mostly marketing just... and uh, we're trying to get another 20 million, hopefully, uh, if the CARES funds uh, restrictions are lifted. There's still some money there to do some capital improvement in Tumon. There's a lot that we're doing right now with this, with the storm drains and uh, and uh, you know we want to upgrade uh, through an EDA funding of 18 million dollars for Matop and Beach and and put a really new face lift there, put the fire department down there and uh, launch their boats from there. And we have a really nice plan that's being put together. We're working through with Public Works right now to get that EDA grant. And Vince Ariola is putting some priority on that. So that's going to be really a big face lift down at Matapan Beach, not only for the tourists, but certainly for the uh, for the, our, our people of Guam. And and there's a, also a safety issue there where there's a little cavern underneath there, a, a, a sump that uh, is slowly sinking simply because of heavy equipment being put on top of those things. We have to shore that up, do better bathroom facilities there, and a good launch for the, for the fire department nurse. Jet skis. Wow. God wow, God. all that at Matopping? Yeah, yeah, very nice. nicely. Uh, I'd like to show you the, uh, the, 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 uh, the rendering of what it's going to look like when it's done. So mm-hmm. hopefully you can do a story on that. Yeah, send that it. Is- send Definitely. It you'll, yeah. Be, you'll be called today on that. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be what? We'll be calling you today to do it. Oh, uh, sure. Ask your grandkids yeah, how to send it on the WhatsApp. Yeah, Dean Hernandez and Keisha. Uh, Garrido, Anadera Garrido, that have the uh, the renderings, and uh, they're the ones that are working in destination development here in Guam. So nice. they'll be the good people to right. interview and show you the uh, the the rendering. So all and the firemen. Also, uh, Flores is the uh, the architect engineer that's uh, putting it together for us. Uh, so we got the approval to do the interview with them. Sure. All right. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're sunshine. <laughs> See you, day. Uh, Gov. So. All the GFD is going to be fighting to get the detail done there to Tumon for that's going to be like our Baywatch, right? <laughs> so only the sexy firemen. <laughs> they got to wear well, like the, the short shorts. It's really a nice thing. They, they get to sleep there and put their equipment there. And man, I'm telling you, launching from Dededu at another 20, 25 minutes uh, delay, mm. right from there, it just makes sense. We have a police station there right now, but I think they can so- coexist. If not, the fire department is more needed there. Because just down the road, they have a, a fire, uh, a police uh, a precinct there. What, so, a, uh, we want to do that. We want to get back into uh, to getting uh, Matapan Beach, our people's park, uh, up to status. Gov, in, a, in a, like any given year, what's you guys' typical marketing budget? The, and, and get marketing? I yeah. think $9 million, right, Jerry? For our yeah, marketing. But- that's Japan only, I think. Uh, in a uh, yeah, but I think uh, Sabrina raised a good question on how the twenty million is going to be spent if we right. don't get it. Yeah, um, especially we only if have destination if to sell, right? Which is Guam, and we need to fix our product. So yeah. if we don't fix our product, our marketing message will be of no use. Uh, and in the initial stages of marketing, uh, keep in mind that this is going to be a slow ramp up from previous years' arrivals. And so we don't want to overspend in marketing and not, you know, there's a point of diminishing returns. So we just need to be careful on sending out the right marketing message, but investing a lot more money than in the past to really improve our product. And that this is not just the, the safety uh, issues and the flooding, but also if we can recapitalize as much as possible, our cultural assets around the island. Yeah, we do have a lot of great cultural assets to um, expose to the tourists. Um, so what? What April first, 
tentative reopening. We're really pushing for this uh, relationship with uh, Taiwan. Anything on the Korean market? Yeah, actually, the Korean market has been very, uh, uh, we look at Korean market as a little bit more nimble market compared to like Japan. Uh, and so we already have some indications. Actually, the carrier that I was going, that I couldn't mention, has put together uh, tour packages with pricing and everything already for like May. So um, we're pretty bullish on, 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 you know, the Korean market. Um, but it's, um, it, we've done some uh, surveys also and have identified consumer segments that are more readily, uh, you know, willing to travel, uh, like among the younger people, the less risk averse people, um, with proper protocols in place, there's really no reason why we couldn't gun that market. But just in terms of managing expectations, we're not going to see, you know, last year's numbers anytime soon, mm. okay? Just because you put all this effort in marketing and improvement doesn't mean you're going to get those level of arrivals. As a matter of fact, um, the everything that we even read on it, it, throughout the world, uh, Guam is not unique in this thing. If you look at historically uh, international travel, if you look at SARS uh, a few years ago, and even the uh, global recession in, two, in uh, 1998 or thereabouts, those were just a little blimp. Those were just a little blimp compared to the COVID impact on international arrivals. We lost 1.1 billion travelers COVID globally. So to get back to those uh, levels, uh, it's going to take, you know, several years. So I just, I just want to manage expectations mm. because, um, just because we get all this money doesn't mean we're going to get pre COVID numbers, like in yeah. the next two to three years, yeah. it may take a lot more years than that, given the fact that the whole value chain, the whole value chain of consumers and, uh, the tourism industry has been appended, you know, they, they just completely a complete, um, reconfiguration, so to speak of, of the product of the consumer mindset. And keep in mind that a lot of businesses are going bankrupt. And so there's also an income issue where people out of a job aren't going to be inclined to travel. Right. Mm. Yeah. So all of these things mixed together, um, make for a longer recovery period than I think a lot of people would like to see, including me. What about the variant? How do you think uh, the variant and uh, its prevalence, uh, its increasing prevalence around the world is going to affect our uh, reopening plans? I, you know, I can't speak to that uh, because I'm not really an expert, but everything that I've heard and read about the variant is that the uh, Pfizer and Moderna vaccines uh, that are uh, being rolled out now uh, are somewhat protective of those uh, variants. Yeah, I got that directly from a doctor when I got my second dose of Moderna. That uh, you don't have to worry about the variant. That'll take care of it too. Right on. Right. I, I know. I checked Dr. Cabrera um, almost every day since uh, he told us that they were doing the genomic sequencing. So. Right. As of yesterday, we haven't got the results from those 20 samples, so we still don't know anything um, in terms of it uh, being on Guam. Gov, what did you think of the senators getting the vaccine? I asked Senator Rajel about it, uh, and I think there was an editorial out. Um, uh, do you think that was justified, or should they have opened it up for you know frontline essential workers like hotel staff, people who come into contact with the public, grocery store workers, that kind of thing? Well, naturally, without arguments, I think those people that are actually uh, with the public uh, in their daily jobs, uh, mm -hmm. I know senators can recess, <laughs> you know, like I said, uh, but the workers got to go to work. And so uh, I think the governor has made that uh, very well known that, uh, that the priorities are those that are going to be uh, working in the general public. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when we do reopen, are we still looking at uh, plans for like the rapid testing at the at the airport for arrivals? 
but there's a way to do something that uh, you know it, it depends on how how far we've gone we've got about 48,000 people vaccinated now and I think it's only like less than 3,000 doses that are being set aside right now that we have on hand that's going to be used for second doses so hopefully the the uh, the, the amount coming in for for February uh, uh, will um, I mean for March will will be able to bring us up to like maybe 70,000 uh, uh, or 60,000 people but there is a by next now I think it is uh, is something that we could uh, it depends on how uh, we've 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 managed to you know whether we whether we whether we have a, 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 a regressive thing on the on on the opening up whether we we got more people infected again but there is a way that tests not only the people that are opening up at the hotels for example and their employees but there's a way for you to be tested as a, as a patron coming in for restaurants etc so there is a way that we can use a certain kind of an antigen test to be able to accomplish a better safety protocol uh, outside of the PCR testing yeah yeah you know Sabrina a couple of things I wanted just to reiterate because I keep hearing this reopening 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 we never closed okay so uh, that might be a misnomer of a reopening we never closed um, but um, I think uh, as far as the uh, the testing goes that's what I was alluding to earlier about having a coherent clear risk proportionate policy for us to communicate to our market and that would speak to a number of issues prior to coming to Guam what are the requirements you get pre-tested you get vaccine whatever it is we just need to work with the public health folks to come up with a clear coherent easily understood policy that we can communicate if we do that and if we communicate the message that Guam is a safe destination to visit, then we're halfway there in, in terms of like, quote unquote, reopening the market in Korea and Japan, for example. Can I bring up something, guys? You know, uh, I, I, I kind of coined this phrase, but uh, people were wondering that people in Japan, Korea and other places are having a hard time, even the Philippines, getting vaccinations. So, uh, you know, there's uh, we have a 45 day uh, with visa waiver for Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and uh, hopefully that we can say, come come for 30 days, come here for Air V and V, and uh, you can stay the 30 days, get both both doses of vaccine. And, and if they have already put it out for the, for the private clinics, private clinics can administer it, hopefully by that time. We can even market that. Come and get your vaccination. <laughs> Air V and V. <laughs> Who thought of that? Is that yeah. twenty million worth right there? <laughs> Is there what twenty million dollars? That's, that's that? good marketing. Good marketing. Airbnb. Right uh, so, so, <laughs> Jerry, uh, this coherent policy that you were uh, referring to with. Uh, uh, and guidance from public health. Is this something that uh, you guys are hoping will be done by April 1st or does it really matter since we're not well, really anticipating people? it matters people a lot. It? Okay. It, it matters a lot. What, what we've been doing actually is we, look, we scattered, uh, we looked at the universe of other islands, okay? Uh, look at the Caribbean, you know, the Caribbean Tourism Organization and their 24 countries and a whole bunch of islands, okay? They're starting to get 20 or 30% of their business back. Cozumel, Cancun is on fire now in terms of getting their business back. <laughs> now, we don't want to be that wild, right? Because there's still that issue with, e with the U.S. market uh, coming in there. But even the Canary Islands, okay? They've got like uh, 50 to 60% of their business back already. And so um, what we've done is looked at all these different islands and what they're arrival protocols are and we've created kind of a proxy that is reflective of what these islands are doing and we're going to use that as a basis to discuss with the physicians group and public health and see if we can come up with uh, our, our Guam uh, policy right that is based out of this proxy that we've gotten from the different islands and so that's kind of the uh, issue because going back to what I call risk proportionate policy. That means that whatever testing, whatever requirements you have uh, is low risk in relation to the benefit of 
having them visit the island. This is very similar. Remember last um, June when we we're talking about if you arrive from Guam, stay less than five days, you don't need to have a test and all this kind of stuff. So this is basically circling back to something similar to that. Only um, what we've done is we've created a proxy um, policy based on what we've gotten from these other islands that are opening up their, uh, you know, uh, places for tourists because these islands are tourist dependent as well. So, so the goal and the hope is to have this policy approved the, by public health. The goal health is to have a April. conversation. Yeah, the goal is to have a conversation uh, as soon as possible this week, next week with public health, the governor's office, physicians group, whoever is shaping this policy. But the goal is to have a risk proportionate policy that is more tourism friendly than our policy is today. What's what part of the policies today are not tourism friendly? Well, the uh, there are a couple issues. Um, the uh, required testing to go back uh, to Japan might be an issue with the other countries. Okay, but that's there. But if we can have a policy, some of these islands. Okay, if you have vaccine, if you, if you can prove vaccination already, then you don't need to go into quarantine. Or if you have a pretest and you come here um, within a certain number of days, then you're free to go into, you know, into your uh, accommodations. So there are there are different ways that can, you know, be congealed basically to make it um, more. Uh, easy for visitors to understand what they need when they get here or do they need anything before they get here yeah. that's not clear i mean we've got like uh 32 pcr tests for example from taiwan japan and uh korea that public health had indicated uh or acceptable but you know, uh, that communication by email is not enough. We need an official letter for that that we can share with, uh, you know, how it is. I mean, if you tell people in Japan or Korea that the government approves this, they want proof. They want to see document, right? Those are some of the details that we, we need to do because it's not good enough to let them know that this is acceptable based on an email communication. I've been hearing things like safe zones. Do you know anything uh, about that, like creating safe zones for tourists? I'm not sure I understand what you mean by safe zones. Kind of like your bubble concept. Right. No? Well, we are actually working to make Guam a safe zone, guys. <laughs> I mean, that's the end goal because that's the message that we need to communicate to our markets. Mm -hmm. You come to Guam, Guam is a safe destination. Mm -hmm. So having said that, then um, this um, coherent policy, it's a month, a little over a month away from uh, April 1st. Uh, are you guys going to have yeah. this done by then? Is that the, the goal to have this coherent policy done by then? April 1? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, I don't see really, it's just a matter of people sitting down and talking through the issues and arriving at some conclusion, but keep putting it away or keep pulling it aside for another day. At some point, you gotta, you know, or get off the pot, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, you guys got a, was that an oversight hearing this week or a hearing hearing? No, there's supposed to be like an information hearing, oh. I think, tomorrow. Right. Uh, so I may need to check out in a few minutes here so I yeah. can yeah. <laughs> get what to you, work on that. What are you anticipating is going to happen at the hearing? 
I have no idea. It's just uh, an informational hearing, so we'll give them what we believe is important information. And obviously, the senators are, you know, free to ask questions. Yeah. But uh, or they could just watch this interview. And... I'm sorry. Or, or they could just watch <laughs> this interview. <laughs> right. Okay. Nice question. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank Governor. You. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, Appreciate we'll see you guys. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. And don't forget, we're going to interview uh, Keisha and um, about the uh, no, I'll, Baywatch. I'll uh, yeah, we'll, Jerry and I will remind them when we get down there. Okay, Esther.